Daily Tech News Show is made possible by you right there listening. I'm in your ear. Hi, how's it going? Thanks to all of you, including John and Becky Johnston, Chris Benito, Steve Iadarola, and brand new patrons. Everybody, welcome in Flo, Antonio, Hoosier Diva, Caleb, and Anthony. Yay! Yay. Yay. On this episode of DTNS, YouTube rolls out a redesign for creators, but is it any good for us viewers? Plus, why Walmart bought Vizio, and Lamar Wilson explains why you need the right size tablet, not the biggest. Maybe the biggest, but not necessarily. This is the Daily Tech News for Tuesday, February 20th, 2024 in Los Angeles. I'm Tom Merritt. And from Studio Animal House, I'm Sarah Lane. Also in Los Angeles, I'm Lamar Wilson. And I'm the show's producer, Roger Chang. Also in Los Angeles. It's the Los Angeles Day. LA oh, yeah. Day. It's in like sunny LA. Squares. You know, it's about time Los squares. Angeles got some representation in the world of <laughs> I media. I wonder what Dr. Dre is doing. Maybe he could join us. Dre well, Day. Let's give him a, let's give him a, uh, yeah. let's give him a little Lamar, call him up. Him. I don't yeah. know. Yeah. Later this I week. need a script. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, <laughs> let's start with the quick hits. 11 countries teamed up on Operation Kronos, resulting in the arrest of two operators of LockBit ransomware, as well as the recovery of the keys to unlock victims' encrypted files. Authorities also seized more than 200 cryptocurrency wallets. French and U.S. authorities also issued three international arrest warrants and five indictments against other members of the operators of LockBit. Two of the indictments are against Russian nationals. Operation Kronos was headed by the UK National Crime Agency and coordinated by Europol and Eurojust. The US FBI, Japanese police, and the UK's NCA and Europe have developed a LockBit 3.0 ransomware decryption tool available to anybody at nomoreransom.org. LockBit has been used in uh, attacks on Boeing, the UK Royal Mail, car company Continental, and most recently, Bank of America. Sony's PlayStation Portal does one thing, stream games from your PS5. And if you don't have a PS5, it's not terribly useful. However, it does have some local storage. So two engineers from Google decided to make it a little more useful, developed PPSSPP. Don't try to figure out the acronym. It's an emulator to run games for defunct PlayStation Portable. The old PSP, the old Sony PSP, oh. on the new PSP, the PlayStation Portal. The developers showed it playing Grand Theft Auto Liberty City Stories. Andy Wayne, one of the developers, said it took him about a month to get the software to work and required no hardware modification, just lots of sweat on the software. Wayne says they need to do more work before they can release it to the public. They want to you know, show off some videos maybe this weekend. Meanwhile, in other Sony news... Analysts think Sony might be gearing up to release a decidedly non-portable PlayStation 5 Pro later this year to help prop up sagging console sales. PPSSPP is a beautiful palindrome. Just mm. pointing that out. Easy to remember. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Adobe has added some generative assistance to its Adobe Reader and Acrobat applications. The new tool can summarize PDFs and answer questions about what's in those PDFs. While other large language models like ChatGPT can also do that, this is built into the software that you're using to read the PDF, so no need to upload it to a separate tool. The Assistant is in beta and available now on Acrobat and coming to Reader over the next few weeks. Adobe eventually plans to release a subscription plan for the tool as well. Samsung announced expanded support for AuraCast, A-U-R-A. -A. Uh, that's a Bluetooth feature that lets multiple headsets, like lots of headsets, access audio from one source. Think uh, TV at the gym. Everybody in the gym can you know, connect their Bluetooth headphones to the one TV. Uh, that means older devices, though, are getting support for AuraCast. That includes the Galaxy S23, uh, the Tab S9. They will join the S24 and Galaxy Buds 2 Pro and a bunch of high-end smart TVs from Samsung. Samsung in supporting the feature. Samsung also announced live translation coming to the S24 and Galaxy Buds rolling out globally. So they've, they've rolled it out in some markets, but it's going to come to everybody. And Samsung's surround sound 360 audio is also expanding to include Neo QLED and OLED televisions. Tinder is expanding its increased user verification requirements to Brazil, Mexico, the U.S., and the U.K. In addition to a short video used to verify photos that, photos that you're using to, you know, 
I don't know, day people are accurate. The expanded system also requires identification like a driver's license or a passport. The system has been in testing in Australia and New Zealand, and verification is optional on Tinder. But the company says if you're a verified user, you have more matches and you're safer from things like romance scams. Mm-hmm. Well, over the next few weeks, YouTube is going to roll out a redesign to creator channels. So when you look at the channel, uh, you'll see a big old subscribe button right up at the top. Uh, it'll be easier for you to find it. Uh, it'll be right next to a play mix button. Uh, if you don't want to try to figure out what to watch, you can press that and it'll shuffle a bunch of top content from the channel. Uh, and that will all be up in front of a new 16 by nine channel banner edge to edge. That'll look great on a television screen. YouTube recently announced that top creators watch time on TVs had grown 400% over the last three years. So they are trying to tweak that design to be more TV friendly. Uh, Lamar, you, you were on YouTube early, uh, establishing your channel there. Uh, you have a much more wide ranging strategy these days. I know with TikTok and Instagram reels, but you know, you st- you're still posting over there on YouTube. What do you make of this change? It's interesting. Every few years, uh, YouTube tends to slap on a new coat of paint, uh, on, on the site. And you know, it's, it can be refreshing. It's, it's, it's nice to see something new. I don't, I, I think there's some creators who welcome changes like this. You, you kind I kind of think of my MySpace days where all of us huh. could, could tweak our page in, in different ways and make it our own thing, you know, but then Facebook came along and said, and it got the more, more popular and they didn't let you do that. And we were all kind of okay with it. So <laughs> I, I don't know if the audience cares as much about this as I think some creators will me personally is like, Oh, great. I get to, I got to figure out how to make yet another banner uh, and, and then make sure <laughs> it has yeah. all these, all these, you know, things that are so it can be seen on TV, but it can also be seen on tablet and also it can be seen on phone. And, and it's like, okay, great. We got, I have to do this again. So um, the only, the other, I mean, I think it's fine. I think so many other features, the, re- the remix button seems really cool. Uh, maybe some, some discovery of some new content. I just think these slaps of, of paint that they put on there are fine, but I, I, w- I really wish that's the cynical part of me. Just really wish they would focus more on like we, we still got some moderation issues to take care of we still got better discovery of of of, t- of talent and creators we got you know there's i you know and i know multiple things can be happen at once but it it just seems like when when those things aren't taken care of hey look here's something shiny and pretty uh that's my slightly cynical take on i mean that. coming from the creator side obviously yeah you, you you're sort of like all right i gotta make a new banner and this and that yeah what i thought was really uh, I don't know, it kind of blew me away was the fact that, again, top creators, not all creators, but there are a lot of people watching YouTube content on traditional television sets. Um, and that is, that that's just a different experience. Um, it, I, I would say more of a, you know, kind of kick back and maybe, maybe watch some longer form things. Or I don't know, you know, watch your playlist on your couch type thing, but not on your phone. So I think this is designed to be more of uh, a pleasant experience for, for, for those of us who actually like watching stuff on the TV rather than a mobile device. Yeah. Watching YouTube on, on, on the television has become pretty regular for us. Uh, and, and sometimes it's long form stuff, but sometimes it's before we watch a TV show, we watch a bunch of three or five minute things that that we like. But the one frustration I have, yeah, it'd be great to make the subscribe button easier uh, for people to find as a creator. D- DTNS has its own channel. That's great. As a, as a consumer, I want to be able to find that subscribe button easier when I find a channel I like. But how do I get to the channel? Like this is to your point, Lamar. Like, was this the first thing you needed to fix? Because right now it's really tough to get to the channel of a video you're watching. You have to like you know, scroll up and then highlight this and then press that and then it starts right. to play another video and then you got to hurry up and highlight the channel like they there there are some other priorities even just in the ui i wish they would fix first yeah and and most people will never see your channel i watch 90 percent of my youtube uh viewing that i watch i watch a few hours a day uh, probably uh, on on average uh I, and i i love the i love the tv app but i rarely go to people's channels and channels is where all the pretty banners would be. I can't tell you the last time I saw someone's banner 
uh, on something, you know, because it's if you watch it in video, it's not going to show that. Now yeah. they have some. And cool, you just see the recommendations all the time, right? That's what most of us do. Right, and they got some cool features. I I, I like that you can scroll comments now on TV. You didn't used to be able to do that, like very comfortably on the side, so I can like read comments and things while I'm watching a longer form video if I, if I want to see other people's perspective. So there's some cool things about it. I like that they're adding new features. I just don't know if those things translate to the audience saying of feeling more satisfied, yeah, uh, yeah. especially and when it comes to like the, the banner, yeah, banners and things like that. Well, Walmart announced it will acquire TV maker Vizio in a deal valued at $2.3 billion, a move designed to help boost Walmart's advertising business through Vizio's SmartCast operating system. Vizio has more than 500 direct advertiser partnerships due to its Vizio Platform Plus business, which the company says now accounts for most of the company's gross profit. Walmart already has an existing on ONN in-house brand of TVs, but owning Vizio will help the retailer better compete with affordable smart TVs from the likes of Amazon and Roku. Now, groceries account for about half of Walmart's sales, but also have thin margins. CNBC also notes Walmart has sacrificed profit in the last couple of years by investing quite a few, quite a few dollars in the billions to build out its digital operation. So new revenue streams can help offset Walmart's heavy spending and boost profit if all goes well. Lamar, this sounds a little like Amazon. Should Amazon be worried? No. <laughs> no, sorry, I don't, I don't mean to be. Yeah, I, no, I, I, I think, I think Amazon would be just fine. And this is coming from someone. I have a Walmart Plus subscription. I, I like Walmart. Uh, I, I, I don't see this being a problem. Like you mentioned, they had a, they have an existing brand uh, on that's been there for a while. Mm -hmm. Vizio, yeah, and like I said, and Vizio's a well-known brand. I have a Vizio TV. Vizio has had some problems. In the past, uh, like they were the ones at least, you know, out, out there, out yeah. there getting getting the most attacks because of the 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 ad, the ad thing where you like it's tracking you on your TV, personalized ads, and and it, Walmart now wants to basically do the same thing, so, you know, and and now it seems like oh it's okay now because we're used to it because. I think you mentioned earlier, Tom, that other brands do this as well. You're like, it's not just. Oh, yeah. No, every Vizio. smart TV does this. Every smart TV operating yeah. system does On it. Some Vizio, level. Yeah. Vizio had, had some controversy around uh, disclosure of it. it. But what they were doing was not particularly unusual. It was just the terms of service weren't, weren't telling you all the things they were doing. Gotcha. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I think Amazon would be just fine. Uh, they, they have so many revenue streams. It's crazy. You know, the whole, the whole, I, I happen to know somebody who works uh, for Walmart Digital. So, you know, I, I was hitting him up er, earlier today, like, tell me everything. Uh, and he was like, I mean, it's kind of what it sounds like. You know, the Vizio business for us helps us advertise in places that we just can't advertise otherwise. You know, how, ma how many pieces of, you know, something that you would find in a Walmart retail store can advertise to you. Television, great option. So, yeah, that's what's going on here. Yeah, and and then Walmart advertising its own stuff is the smallest slice of this. What they want on Vizio is to sell ads to other people. Yep. Uh, and that's where they're coming into competition with Amazon uh, because Amazon is also wanting to sell ads to other people, not only on Amazon.com, but but also on the Fire TV OS and placing ads elsewhere uh, on, mm -hmm. on other websites. You can, you can have Amazon traffic ads and websites can use Amazon to traffic ads, which is really what I think is going on. Walmart's not getting into competition with Amazon so much as Walmart is saying, we want ad revenue. We want to sell ads. We want ad revenue to be a big part of our business now. Uh, and that's really interesting when you think of the fact that Google is facing questions about whether it can continue to bring in ad revenue with AI possibly reducing search traffic. And there's a reduction in search traffic for other reasons too. People just go into TikTok and Reddit directly and, and things like that. So there is more competition in the ad market now than ever. And it's interesting to see as maybe search declines as the place for advertising, Walmart sneaking in and saying, you know what? One of the big growth areas for advertising in the future is going to be the television interface. It's going to be showing you an ad while you're cl clicking around whatever platform you have. So let's get one of those platforms. 
So is this going to be kind of like the, this is not exactly a, a perfect analogy. I was thinking of like the McDonald's model where, yeah, you know, they're, they're really in real estate, but they happen to make burgers. Uh, you know, mm-hmm. is is Walmart going to be like, yeah, yeah, we're we're actually an advertiser, but we happen to sell groceries. I mean, we they'd like to- that. That, yeah, you, yeah it's, it, 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 that may or may not end up being the case, but it's like Amazon's a cloud company, right? Like AWS right, is the biggest part of their revenue. These companies do more than one business. You, ha- you have to keep that in mind. Walmart has other businesses too, besides retail, uh, but they would like this to be a, a growing uh, part of it. And they, I'm wondering if they regret selling Voodoo now uh, to, to NBC because that, that could be another part of this. Uh, yeah. This it piece seems of the like a way man. to get some of that back. Yeah. I mean, listen, I don't even know where a Walmart is near me. I'm sure there is one in Los Angeles somewhere. I'm not going it's in, in Torrance. there, but okay. It's in Torrance. <laughs> um, great. I've been there. Uh, you know, it's still not on my way to anything. So probably not going to Walmart anytime soon, but I'm in the market for a new TV Price is right on the Vizio. Now Walmart has me as a consumer. Oh, well, that's an interesting forward. part of this too, because we mentioned the on brand. Mm-hmm. I'm curious. I, I think Hisense might make the on brand for Walmart, but I wonder if they will for much longer, right? Because mm-hmm. Walmart yeah. owns that name, so they can just switch who makes it, and it would make perfect sense to have Vizio start making the on brand TVs. And then you'd be buying either a Vizio or an on-brand TV, or they might just retire the on-brand because Vizios are, are pretty much a bargain brand to begin with. Yeah. Well, uh, Lamar, it was so fun to have you on Apple Vision Show with me and co-host Eileen Rivera yesterday. Uh, if you're sitting there wondering, what is Sarah talking about? Um, we do a new show. Uh, myself and Eileen Rivera host a brand new show, Apple Vision Show, uh, and we talk about all things Apple. Uh, is it the Vision Pro? Is it about foldable iPhones coming in the future? Is it uh, various sizes of iPads that I know Lamar has a lot of uh, feelings about? Every week, we do our thing, and we would love you to join us. Join us every week at applevisionshow.com. Subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. <laughs> All right, let's talk a little bit more about those iPad sizes, Lamar, because the iPad line has become a little, I don't know if I want to call it confusing, but it can be a little bit of a, you know, you're you you uh, you're crippled by choice. Uh, you have screen size, CPU power, you have price, all things to consider when buying a new unit. While people equate bigger with being better, Not always the case with the iPad. So let's talk about uh, what you did recently. Uh, You swapped an iPad mini for an 11-inch iPad Pro, only Mm -hmm. to come back to the mini. So what's going on there? Yeah, the song Baby Come Back started uh, (laughs) playing in the background. No, so, uh, (laughs) yes. So I own the latest iPad mini. I think it's the sixth generation, if I'm not mistaken. I uh, had, had that for about a year or so, a, few, a couple of years back during the pandemic, and I loved it. I love the form factor. Yes, I'm a person who who uses a, a Pro Max phone, but I still wanted something a little bit larger, you know, just for those those Candy Crush moments. Don't judge mm-hmm. me. I love playing mm-hmm. that on there. Uh, and, I mean, you, know, and other, you and lots of other people. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and doing other work with it, you know, but then the... the uh, the pro came out and I love the pro the pro it was, I got the 11 inch one and by all accounts, everything on it is better, better screen, better uh, refresh rate, you know, 120 Hertz and M2 chip, uh, face ID is superior in my opinion to the touch ID. A lot of people don't agree with that, but, um, so by all accounts, it's a better one. But what I found is that it was just, I wasn't using it. It was heavy. It was heavier. And I was like, but, but still I was like, but I, I do, like that form factor, what is the problem? I think I discovered that my 16 inch MacBook uh, Pro was the issue because my MacBook sits in front of me most of the day. Even if I'm not in my office, I bring it down on a TV tray, have it in front of me. So that size and then trying to go grab an iPad didn't seem, it didn't seem to match up. It, they were too, it was, they were it too was, close to each other. It was too use close. Cases, it sounds like, yeah, yeah. They were too close and, and, so after and I just it just was collecting dust and I it wasn't getting used even though it is the better one and a more powerful one. So I decided a couple of weeks ago to go back to the iPad Mini, and I instantly just refill uh, back in love with it. So you know people on video I'm, or I'm holding or on audio I'm holding it here and it's it, you know what I what I use this for I'm a comic book reader uh, the digital 
So that and uh, novels, self-help books. This to me is such a one-handed, easier format for those mm. things. And also, and also playing, you know, Apple Arcade games. Uh, I'm trying to think of some other, uh, uh, you know, just I, I would say more reading, more multimedia. I don't really do video as much with it because I have if I'm in my living room, I get a big TV in front of me. So uh, I'm, I'm not really doing much of that. But for consuming any kind of reading or or games, it, it is, it's so light. Now, is it as fast as the, no, it, it has an eight chip. It, it's by all accounts, it's an inferior device. But uh, what I found, guys, is that. You know, I guess the the moral of this story is that, you know, just just because it's you know the just iPad Pro is it's better, just because it's fancier doesn't mean it's better. Doesn't, doesn't mean it's better. You know, I I, yeah. I really I really, but you know, and I I found out I was looking at some Reddit posts. A lot of people have the same dilemma, and they were I was finding that they were going back and forth too. So I thought this would be kind of helpful to tell people about this you know this dilemma because it's it's tough. You always want the best thing when you especially when you're in tech. And this is not the best thing, but guess what? It's the best for me. Yeah. And I think you, that's what counts. So the fastest chip isn't always the best chip for you. Like, don't don't make your decision just on that. I think that that makes sense. Yeah. You you ne- you noted a lot of entertainment uses for this, but you're you're using it in your work too, right? Oh yeah, I use it as a uh, I don't want to call it a teleprompter, but yeah, a note. I I have it like behind the camera. Uh, propped up so I could read notes and I couldn't do that with the bigger one because it would mm-hmm. get in the way of the camera. Little things like that. Uh, I, 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 it's in the kitchen with me for recipes and, uh, and you know, things like that. Again, digital books. But but for work, it's very, very useful. You know, it's, fu- it's funny. I... I, you mentioned having the Pro Max as, you know, the, the larger mm-hmm. iPhone. Um, and because of... Um, and I, I do as well... I, I just can't imagine going back to any smaller phone at this point in my life. But because of that, the iPad mini has always felt like a strange bridge device where I'm like, eh, it's slightly bigger than my phone mm-hmm. and it's an iPad, but I could just have a bigger iPad. And, you know, I, I, I think we're all different in that way. Yeah. I thought, I thought the same thing and, until the MacBook came in account. Because uh-huh. I started, cause, you know, if the if I leave if I leave the MacBook up here, and I went and I just say, hey, downstairs, I'm going to use my. I would have been using the 11 inch every single day. That would have yeah. been, you know, I would got the keyboard, been perfect, but I didn't. So it was just it was just hard to justify that in my in my head. Well, it was, it, it was, it, it, it's interesting. Conundrum. Because I'm, I'm sure somebody out there might be thinking, well, but wait a minute, you could have used the 11 inch tablet the exact same way you're using the mini. Why didn't you? I, I think the, the the main answer it is feels better. Feel the feel. It's yeah. yeah. It's, uh, it's it's lighter. Uh, it's the I, I, it's weird. I find it easier in my eyes to read. It's easier it, to it, hold. Easier. It, to, it, it yeah. feels like a book. When I want to uh-huh. read a novel, I want to read a self help book. It feels like I'm holding a book. I'm a I'm a first generation Kindle owner. I had the first Kindle, and I love that form factor. Um, and so I I resisted the larger Kindles when it came out. Because I'm like, no, that's too big. I don't want a magazine reader. I want a book yeah, reader. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and maybe psychologically, too, there's something to be said about a form factor that doesn't feel like a computer. I mean, it is a computer, clearly. But something that's a little different from that MacBook Pro that you sit down and yeah, use for yeah. certain stuff. Um, I, I'm that's definitely I, I'm there on that. As yeah. soon as you add a keyboard to that tablet, suddenly you're like, well, I should just use my MacBook, right? Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. That's what happened. And I was just like, yeah, I might as well just bring that down because I can get, I can multi, I mean, you know, I just get things done fast. I can multitask on iPads, obviously. But it's just, it's just a few more steps. And I'm like, my, my MacBook is right there. Mm-hmm. Why am I, why am I making this hard? So I just focused it. But here, here's what I wanted to know. I want to know from your listeners and, and uh, your viewers like, do they have this kind of d- dilemma? And, and and let's put the, I, you know, if you're not an Apple user, let's put that to the side. Maybe yeah, yeah. There's all you, kinds you of look tablets. at the, you know, there's an Amazon Fire tablet, and that's hugely popular. A lot of parents buy that for their kids, and a lot of them buy it for themselves or to, like, manage their smart home. You know, there's there's different uses for the for those uh, smaller tablets. And I'm wondering, you know, uh, you mentioned a tab, right? A Galaxy tab earlier? Galaxy tab, yeah, right. Yeah. I'm just curious, of, you know, what's the percentage of people – kind of facing the same dilemma and maybe made a decision. It's like, you know what? I like this form factor. Yeah. It downsize your tablet. You don't, you don't need all those rooms. 
You know, it's just just more more parts of your tablet to have to keep clean. You know, it's just you know time to move out. Yeah. Get something yes. smaller. A smaller form factor means less cleaning. <laughs> less so screen to yeah to wipe down. <laughs> All right, let's check out the mailbag. Let's do it. Michael wrote in in response to the top five computers that found a second life as gaming consoles and said, "Wait, was the Nintendo Family Computer Famicom not a computer before?" it became a game system that is uh that is correct i mean it's a computer in the way we were just talking about how tablets are also computers because they've got chips yeah. in them uh, but yeah it was never really touted as a computer the way the computers in this top five were the, the computers in this top five were meant as home pcs home personal computers that you could you know do spreadsheets on uh famicom was never really marketed that way it was it was it was I guess it was kind of marketed as a family computer, but it was always a game console first, first and foremost. I don't remember this thing. I'm the so Famicom dumb. was just the the original <laughs> Nintendo, right? Like, and yeah. they only called it the Famicom in, in Japan. In right? Japan, yeah. for that reason, because we in the U.S. we would have been like, "This isn't a computer. This is a game console." <laughs> why, why are you calling it that? And then I said, "Oh, our mistake. It's an entertainment system. The Nintendo <laughs> Entertainment System." Well, speaking of entertainment, Lamar Wilson, you entertain people far and wide every day. Let folks know where they can keep up with how to be entertained by you. You can follow me at Lamar Wilson. That's Lamar with two R's at all the socials except X. And uh, if you want to know more about me and bi biography and all the places, you go to Lamar.tv. That's my website. Appreciate it. Indeed. Uh, and check out uh, Apple Vision Show uh, where they're talking to Lamar about the Apple Vision Pro because you you have an Apple Vision Pro, right? I do. And, oh, yeah. And that, we, that, we, and that also we, changed some, we, some we reading. We threw it down yesterday. Mm. It was really mm -hmm. fun. Great show. Yeah, you would because we, we now know where the laptop and the tablet fits in Lamar's life. If you're like, okay, how's the Apple Vision Pro fit in that? Go check that out, applevisionshow.com. Yeah. Uh, patrons, the conversation does not end here. Stick around for the extended show, Good Day Internet. There's a Korean pizza chain out there claiming to use robots and AI, and it's expanding. It's succeeding. Uh, it's showing up in more parts of the world. We talk about how much that might be true, that it's using robots and AI, and whether it matters when the chain is super successful. Just a reminder, you can catch our show live because we do it live Monday through Friday at 4 p.m. Eastern, 2100 UTC. You can find out more at dailytechnewsshow.com slash live. And we're back doing it all again tomorrow. Hope you'll join us. The DTNS family of podcasts. Helping each other understand. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs>